Shirt Show. All right, let's go. Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Shirt Show! All right! Episode 207 of Shirt Show. We're recording live at the Logo Daddy House Party with Adrian from DTFprinting.com. Let's go! Okay, so we have a special guest here today, and she is going to read some of our sponsors for us. And so the first one. GSF. It all starts with a screen, and whether it's new stretches or restretches, Frank and his team do it the best. To find out more, go to graphicscreenfashion.com. (laughs) Frank.com. Greatfuckingscreens.com. Perfect. Easy Way. Cleaning screens is no fun, but Easy Way makes it way more funner. Their line of eco-friendly chemicals will make reclaiming screens a whole lot easier. Check them out at easyway.com. Easy way, it's the the easiest easiest way. way. (laughs) She's doing great. She's way better than you. (laughs) This is perfect. (laughs) Graphic source. GraphX is the source for production-ready digital art and remote art staffing. We use them every single day. Learn more at graphicsource.com. Chromaline. Choosing the right emulsion for your shop is complicated, and that's why we love Chromaline. Go to chromaline.com to watch Kev's vids or contact him on IG, the emulsion guru, and get the answers you want and need. SNS. So for both of us, SNS has been our go-to shirt source since day one. If you don't know, they have a program called Contract Decorator Network, which a gentleman named Frank Good runs. If you're doing more and more contract work, this is something you need. So don't sleep on this nice service. You're fucking flawless. Look at that. All right, now you can read the bottom. Right here. Okay. Gildan. American Apparel is the OG of premium blanks. The one that everyone tried to imitate. Go with the original. The American Apparel 2001. She did great. She did way faster uh, than we oh, ever did. On. One more. One. We've got... Screen Print GPT. And of course, Screen Print GPT, you definitely need to sign up for this free problem solver or you'll get... Yamo? <laughs> <laughs> it's y- Yamo. Yeah, so like Yamo. instead of FOMO... Fear of missing out, it's you are missing out. Yamo. Are you making up a new thing right now? <laughs> no. Makes total sense. Yeah. Is it is it like fetch where it's never gonna catch on? I tried. I tried, I tried. Okay. Okay. All right. So my name is Andy and I am with Shirt Kong and I'm part of the shirt show. And this guy over here, who are you? Introduce me. I liked what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's Dylan from Upstate Merch in New York. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the middle, we have Adrian Palmer from DTFprinting.com. Woo, come on. We didn't get... <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> we see he was popular here, yeah. Right. Um, so what a weekend. So we came in... Uh, what, when did you come in? I can't remember anymore. It's been like a... I flew out on Tuesday to Christina in Florida, and then we flew to you on Thursday, and then for JoJo's birthday. For JoJo's birthday, yeah, and we went to um, what's that place called? City Museum. Did you have you been there? Has everybody been to City Museum around here? Yeah, it's insane. That place was crazy. Have you been to the caves in the City Museum? Yeah. And then we we were trying really hard to do the slide. And then we finally did this five story slide. And it was like murder for me and you because it's just like welded metal. And then you stand up and hit your head, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. And then we did uh, the zoo, St. Louis Zoo. Have you been there? Has everybody been there? Saw Robbie, the sea lion. Mm hmm. He's 22 years old, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> and then we find out that sea lions only live to like 25 and that he only has a couple of years of life left. Um, <laughs> I don't live here. It's nice. Your guys' sea lion, not mine. <laughs> uh, and then what? Cards game. The cards game last night was fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so it was my first baseball game. Can you believe that? And he's only, and he's 22. First, first baseball game. <laughs> I don't think I watched a single bit of that game, but I had the best time. Didn't even look at the field. Was it your first baseball game? No. So, yeah, we're here today. We're going to talk about, um, well, our guest is is a pro at, at DTF Printing, and we're going to talk about that. And so you want to introduce yourself, and or, I guess we already done that, but you want to talk about what your role is there? Yeah, sure. So 
Adrian Palmer with DTF Printing. Uh, <laughs> you guys are giving me a big head. Um, uh, you may know me previously from Screen Printing Magazine. I was the editor in chief there for a few years and Big Picture Magazine um, in the wide format space for 11 years. Um, last year, I, I got a Facebook message, which I don't even have a personal Facebook. I have like a professional one for the industry um, from Andy McDaniel, who owns DTF Superstore in Phoenix, supplier of DTF equipment. And um, he said, there's not enough education in the DTF space. I want to kind of do what you're doing with screen printing for DTF. Are you, you know, do you want to come on board as editor in chief? And I said, absolutely. I made a few phone calls to see, you know, is DTF a thing? Is it kind of a fad? What's going on? And every single person I talked to said, no, we're buying equipment or we're outsourcing transfers or we're outsourcing um, in general. So hopped on um, in August, launched the website the day before printing United. It was DTF.com originally. We sold that and now um, our URL is DTFprinting.com and we are a resource for the industry. Website, newsletter, podcast, social media, uh, anything that will help you if you're in the DTF space or want to be, grow your business. I want to step back real quick though. How did you get involved in this industry at all in the first place? So I went to school for magazine journalism. I am not you a You were printer. like screen printing magazine. <laughs> That's it. Uh, magazine. That's all I needed to hear, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, went to school for journalism, wanted to do something in the magazine world, wasn't really thrilled with any of my uh, offers outside of college. So um, Big Picture was based in Cincinnati. I'm from Ohio. They were uh, hiring an assistant editor. Um, so I knew nothing about printing, definitely didn't know anything about wide format digital print, started there as assistant editor, worked my way up to editor in chief. There was some restructuring in the company and they said, you're taking on the sister publication screen printing. And I said, okay, Did I really- Did you get like a crash course at all or was it just- Don't know up? anything, no. I went to WB camp in Sacramento where when Tom Davenport still had his show there or his uh, shop there. And I was like, oh, no offense to wide format people, you guys are cool. And like, I can wear jeans and like hang out and you guys are fun. So learned, I started learning everything there and clearly didn't want to leave the apparel side. So yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. I think a lot of people, um, and I think we talked about this earlier is that a lot of people in DTF, in the DTF world and the whole space, a lot of them have never even screen printed before. And so here they are, you know, um, decorating garments uh, for the first time and it's DTF and they don't know anything about screen printing, but you, you have this background in screen printing. And so I guess, how has that helped you with explaining, you know, I guess, um, apparel decoration to DTF printers that, that haven't screen printed before? I would say actually my wide format background is helping even more because it's on the digital side, but yeah, there's, it's really interesting because we had DTF Expo in Phoenix and I was expecting just because I'm so used to going to impressions or more apparel decorator shows that there would be a lot of screen printers there. And like you said, it was just a lot of people that during COVID as DTF is so new, they started just ordering transfers or they were starting to buy equipment, small shops. They have no background in even anything technical whatsoever right. so and there's so much education that's, that's what crazy that we were talking about is nowadays you can just go online and buy a heat press and you're technically a print shop technically but right but yeah. i'm saying like if you're just someone in town or a business or whatever you can be like i can print your shirts like i can make absolutely, your absolutely. i was at i was at michael's returning we're uh, we make beads now at sure kong so we'll make bracelets so uh, if you hit us up if you need bracelets but i was returning some uh some letters at michael's and right in front of me was Cricut machines on sale, um, heat presses and machines and the whole vinyl, the whole thing. You could buy it for like under $300 and be in business. You know, I know it's not DTF, but it's vinyl. And, oh, and you could just order DTF from ever. So you were talking about the three ways to integrate DTF into your shop. Do you want to share that? Yeah. So the three ways that I, I mean, I look at it in three ways. You can buy a DTF printer, go all in with the machinery. You can outsource, um, so you can purchase transfers from Transfer Express, Stalls, Howard, Supercolor, um, and then have a heat press in house. And so you're just ordering the transfers, heat pressing, or you can outsource entirely. So you can be a screen printer and say, I don't want to deal with any of that. Find a good person that you trust and outsource all of that. And that's, so that's how I look at it. We just went on a kind of a vacation with some of our friends and a lot of us were in the pool talking about this. And uh, at what point do you think it is right for a screen printing shop to go from ordering it out to doing it in an house? 
because we were talking dollar amounts. We were like, all right, well, if you're spending this much a week, get into it. But then it's a whole other thing of like buying the machine, doing the maintenance, having an employee that actually runs the machine. So I'll give an example. Family Industries spends a million dollars with Supercolor a year. They have no interest and no future plans to bring equipment in right. house. So the That's question, at, the question of okay, I'm spending X amount of tra- dollars on transfers a month or I'm buying all these transfers. That's just one part of the puzzle. Do you have the team and do you have the space and do you have the customers? Do you have the ability to run the printer all day long? Do you have like maintenance? You know, And also when you're looking for a vendor, do you have great customer support? Do you have trust there? There's a lot that goes into it just based, it's not just yeah. how many transfers am I buying? The other part of that too is that, is that you might order DTF now from somebody who's like super, like been doing it for a long time, has the best print method, the best, the best settings, the best film, all these things and you get the quality and you're like, oh, I'm gonna go buy my own printer. You're not getting the same thing. You're gonna have to go through all of that to get this to get to where they are there's a lot of troubleshooting there's a lot of figuring right. it out so you also have to make sure that you have the time right to do that too and also the skill set to figure that out so what are you guys doing then with the dtfprinting.com is it more education to get people into the space is it more just for the people who are in it to like figure out how to get to the next step and navigate like what's the goal all of the above so people who you know we are profiling people who are coming to our site are people who are maybe interested in it have already started out or are running three machines a day so it really varies um we cover news products um shop profiles we have the dtf printing podcast um we have videos that really run through the basics of what you need to do um and so yeah just an education resource for anyone at any level of DTF printing. And hopefully too, you know, screen printers who are kind of thinking what's what's next for me. Right. And I think DTF is an addition to screen printing. It's not taking it away. It's just something that you can add whatever level you want to be at. Um, and while we were at the, um, at that pool, there was a guy and he was uh, gonna, he came, he showed up and he was gonna hypnotize all of us one at a time. Uh, and he was wearing a shirt in the back of a shirt. Um, it was bedazzled. <laughs> it was, it was a little bit of bedazzling too, but it was DTF. It turns out and he, we asked him about it and he says, yeah, I, d- I did this myself. Like he ordered it or his wife uh, did it too mm-hmm. or something like that. Like they did it. He's together, like, yeah, I went so. to Ninja transfers and I got transfers <laughs> yeah. and I, I ordered, I pressed it myself with my wife's cricket. And, and that was to me like that, that's pretty wild, you know, because I feel like it's coming, you know, you can, you can do DTF in your, in your bedroom or your, uh, your garage or anything really anywhere in your car, if you wanted to. And so <laughs> Nick would, do you want to, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like at our shop, we, we try, um, I actually threw out a, a survey, um, to about, I don't know, like 15 shops recently. And I said, you know, how much of your screen printing right now could you shift to DTF, like what, what's your number? Just take a guess, like percentage wise, how much could you just move over to DTF and then screen print the rest? And so I, the, the, the average came back, it is about a third. So a third of our business can go DTF route. Now, like why, why, why would you wanna do that? And I, the strategy behind that part of it is anyway, is that you're gonna keep some of those complicated jobs off your, off your big presses, you know? Um, anything that is, is small quantity, you can still do. So like we had to raise our minimums because of this guy, this hypnotized guy and think guys like that, that, you know, they're, they're not coming to our shop anymore. Um, they're, they're doing, you know, smaller quantities somewhere else. And so we raised our minimums and why are you smiling over there? Something funny <laughs> because of the hypnotized guy. <laughs> um, and so, just picturing some guy hypnotizing us in a pool. <laughs> <laughs> Did he do a good job? No, it was awful. <laughs> This is, nobody got hypnotized. And by the end of it, he literally said out loud, like, I'm going to slip my wrist and go home. It was, like- it was, it was he, he completely bombed and it was so awkward. It like it got worse and worse and worse. And I eventually tried to convince one of our friends to go up and like act like they're hypnotized or something. And it sort of half worked, I think. So did you get your money back? No, no, no. Steven. It was worth the entertainment. It was, it was fun. But yeah. Steven um, paid for it. So the, I guess the problem, though, um, I think with the DTF is like, where, where is that, you know, is there a hard cutoff? So what, what shifts to DTF, what stays screen print? And so, um, I think that number's changing and I, that's why I guess my next question to you is, is that, 
Um, I think that for us, anything under 100 and over maybe five colors, you know, makes sense to go TTF. But um, that's for now, you know, that's that's now's, um, I guess, production speeds and stuff like that. So is that getting faster and is that going to change to, oh, anything under 1,000, you know? And so how do you feel or what are you hearing from um, your side since you're in that space? What are you hearing? Yeah, a lot of people I talk to, that number is changing. Even just over the last couple of months, that number is growing. And I think with as the technology advances, um, I've said this a thousand times, it's in its infancy. You know, it's just a couple of years. And so give it more time, give other manufacturers more time to really tweak because a lot of people got a lot of lemons, you know, a couple of years ago. There's been issues with DTF printing. Well, there was also printing. like, like Frankenstein machines where it was like yeah. this printer with this shaker with this dryer, whatever. And right. it's like everyone was waiting for like the Epson or something to be like, this is a one unit thing. Here's your customer service and support. Like, here's the whole thing. Yeah. And it's not even just that, too. It's like the upgrade in like a carousel heat press That's or like saying, hot yeah. peel transfers and everything else. It's like, OK, can we get this up to speed? Mm -hmm. It's a lot different from taking someone and just manually pulling down a heat press to going to an air press to going to a carousel. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of big changes. Yeah. I mean, and just a lot of people who started from the beginning, again, we're talking 2018, 2019, they were buying from overseas, had zero support. They're trying to talk to someone at two in the morning yeah. and they're like, oh, well, what you get is, you know, what you get. And we don't really provide customer service. Now that some of the bigger names that we know of, you know, Mamaki, Roland, especially me from the wide format side, you know, that have a digital background as they start to come out with this product and then increase the value and talk to their customers, you know, we're going to see better printers in the next couple of yeah. years. And as you mentioned on the heat press side too, that's growing as well. But I think Andy, what you were saying in terms of that number, it's, it, it varies from every guest I have on the podcast or people I talk to, it really changes, but you mentioned something too, color. So of course, if you have two colors and you've got 3000 shirts you're gonna do, you're not going to DTF that. That's going to be screen printing. And I think that's well, going to be screen printing for a very long time. The truth is at some point time. it just comes down to the math of like, okay, well anything over four colors at this is this pay rate for this amount of shirts printed an hour on an auto. And then it's like, all right, well I can do this on a heat press with one person and there's zero issues. There's zero screens to break down. There's zero inks to mix. There's mm -hmm. all this stuff and yeah. it's like, Where's the actual numbers break down to in a shop? You should figure out anything 100 pieces or less that's four color or over makes mathematical sense to just do this DTF. Not because you can get away with it or because it's a workaround from less work. It's just it actually makes more sense profit wise. And we visited Warrior Logo Wear here. It's actually not in Missouri. They're technically in Illinois on Thursday. They went from screen printing entirely to DTF and entirely. entirely entirely DTF they do not have any screen printing at all i don't even really think they outsource much screen printing but they were saying the actually the education to the customer is a really big thing for them because they have a customer base that was so used to screen printing and now they're explaining a new technology they're explaining the differences and that is what has been interesting to me does it matter to your customers does it maybe not all your customers, but what kind of conversation are you having with them? Is it because it matters about the price, the price difference, or do they really care if it's screen printed or DTF, if the quality is I think the, the hard part for the screen printing community is it's the screen printer that cares more than the actual customer cares. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's definitely true. And that's the thing too, is like on your guys' website, you have a video of a guy, I can't remember his name, sorry, but the you, from the, the conference that was talking about the halftones. Okay, yeah. And like just Jeremy. going through that is scary for printers because that's the biggest stigma for a lot of these people is oh it feels like a sticker it feels like a vinyl whatever but it's like if you can drop out the black and say it's going mostly on black shirts and he was even talking he can put it on any color shirt like and just to knock out that hand feel issue is like to me was the biggest thing because i was always looking at quality like we would screen print a complicated print here and then we would order a dtf of the same thing just to compare the two and we're looking at it and on video and just feel we're like, holy shit, these are basically the same thing. Well, Andy asked me, is this DTF for screen printing? I said, that'd be pretty bad if it was screen printing, but he couldn't tell just by, you right. know, taking a look. So, yeah, and that's where um, I have a little um, demo to show you. And I'm going to be off camera, but that's OK. I have two shirts here. One of them is screen print. One of them is DTF. And so by show of hands, I want to see if you guys can guess from a distance. 
Extract number one. And here we go. And here we have extract number two. What do you think that one is? Show of hands. They can see the logo daddy fibrillation from there. Raise your hand if you think that is screen print. We got what? Six? You want to say that on a microphone so the people that are listening to this can hear what the fuck you're talking about? Well, here's a, here's what's scary is that wow, like I did this earlier before everybody was in here. Uh, there were a few people and they nobody got it right, and she said like, "Isn't that scary that you're just not sure which is which?" But that's what I was saying too, though, is that John did a great job with that. Is because there's a lot of negative space. Like there's, yeah, yeah. it's not a block of black. True. So it's it, design did you, matters. Did you post press that at all? Uh, the, the no, the DTF one is that post press uh, with like a. Do you know what you use? Was it Teflon or did you use like heavy linen or something? Uh, we use a linen sheet. Okay. Not a full canvas, but a linen. Right. Yeah. Now, do you guys do you guys have anything with that like? Have you done like tests to figure out what the best post press material is? So as I mentioned, Andy McDaniel and DTF Superstore um, started DTF.com, now DTF Printing, and DTF Superstore with Jeremy Hales, who um, you were watching that video from DTF Expo, they do so much testing. Right. And so we're kind of taking some of that information from them, not specific, not just them, but um, that's something that's kind of on my list in terms of education is yeah. to really get into the nitty gritty. And we have, we have articles on all of this and definitely a ton of basics videos, but that's something that I will eventually want to get into on the education yeah. space. Um, and at future events kind of getting into all of that. I feel like that makes a massive difference. Like you could, you could just press it and peel and look at it and be like, wow, this looks really cool. But then when you do like a heavy linen, it like knocks it into the garment, makes it more matte, like mm -hmm. actually makes it feel like a screen print. Yeah. So. And I, I mean, I was, I was just, Again, I'm not a printer, but heat pressing a few different garments just last week and the difference between some materials you think would work, mm -hmm. but it's like there's so much troubleshooting that has to go into it. And um, actually at DTF Expo this year, we had the first ever DTF printing t-shirt contest and uh, 20 people ended up sending in their shirts and the, it, we sent, we had them send in the same we gave them the same graphic, the same material, you know, same blank t-shirt and the differences between every single Zach Acorn was a judge, one of three. And it was crazy. They were in there. They, they could have been in there all day trying to figure out, you know, who was the winner, but it was wild to see the differences in all of the prints. And again, I feel like it's one of those things like Andy just proved with holding the shirts up is it's like to us printers, we know the differences and we, we want to look up close, but in reality, someone wearing the shirt, it's a three foot rule. It's like, if anybody in the front row was wearing that shirt, I wouldn't be able to tell if that was screen printer or DTF. Does the design look cool? Is it what I want to see? Is it, are you showing off something you really love? Like for me right now, like I have this true detective shirt on and like, I could be like, oh, this is cool. This is screen printed. I like the way this feels. I like the print, whatever. But if I would have DTF this, I, nobody in here would have known the difference. I wouldn't no. have cared. That's also true. Yeah, the latter part of that. but. As apparel decorators, you want to care. No, I know, but I'm saying, but like, in reality, like, us not. now, like, I could fight all day long that screen print this, screen print this, and then I go to Target with my daughter, and I see all these shirts, and I'm like, wow, oh, that's a transfer, that's a transfer, that's right. a transfer. And I'm not advocating necessarily for transfers. Like, I love screen print, and obviously, I want to do as much of that as possible, but it, the truth of it is, is it's, it's a tool. Like, for us in our shop, there's a lot of things, too, where, like, yeah, we could screen print this, and we like we pride ourselves in what we can print but then there's there's all this stuff too where we see a job come in and it's like one day it might be a one color on a sponge fleece hoodie or something and we're like all right whatever a sponge fleece sucks and then the next day it's like this customer who's a good customer of ours is like i need this 12 color back six color front on a sponge fleece hoodie 
And before we've been like, oh, it's going to suck. Like registration is going to be a pain in the ass, like all these things. Now it's like we can DTF this all day and customers mm-hmm. are going to be stoked. And we don't have to tell them like, can you knock down the colors? Can we make this design a little smaller? Can we do this? Can we do this? And now it's like, nope. We just look at the customer and say, cool, we got this. This is this new process we do. Send them a sample, whatever. And they're like, yeah, sweet, run it. Yeah. There's less having to say no. Right. And that's what we found for sure. Yeah. That's Hood prints, nice. sleeve prints. Eight color sleeve. Nobody wants to do that. Right. Yeah, I think the truth is that, um, you know, Dylan and I were on uh, my deck this morning. Whoa. And <laughs> <laughs> I set him up for such good stuff. Um, and we both said, you know, like, hey, so if we were starting over again today, if we were starting a shop today, would we do it you know, like all over again, same way, like screen print, or would we just start DTF? And I think the, it's, the answer is easy, just like you just said. I didn't even know that about this warrior um, in Illinois or whoever they are that they converted. I think the answer is easy because the investment, you know, is crazy. I don't know, 1% of what screen print is, you know? Um, I could train somebody to run a heat press in- Five minutes. Maybe, yeah. And um, I mean, we have lasers on ours to line things up, you know? And so I think the answer is, is pretty simple. The end is we would just, we wouldn't invest yeah. in screens and a screen room and wax machines and all that kind of stuff. And so what I think is gonna happen is that there's gonna be high volume, high production, you know, carousels because mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't, I don't even need to buy a DTF machine. I'd just rather order it and let them handle all of, all of the headaches and instead have Ross build this, you know, 500 piece an hour thing that's just in line or whatever it does that, you know, you load and then uh, you preheat and then you put, uh, you load the shirt, you preheat, you put the, the DTF down, you stamp it, you peel it off, somebody else does. And you're not even going to pull it down. There's going to be a robot to do it for you. A robot. And then there's somebody that's doing that. What'd you talk about? You put the canvas on top or something. Mm-hmm. There's, a, Post there's a, 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 a pallet or a heat press that has that already on it and it gives it the texture you need and then it gets to the end and some it's done. Like that's it. And so I don't have to invest in a and the, the auto reclaim. And the stuff discussion like that. too was is that you can, if I was to start over, and sorry, Ross earmuffs was just like, <laughs> I wouldn't buy a press over like a six or an eight color press. Like, there, who's going? Why do you need to buy the sixteen color auto anymore? Because then, if you do the math again, you're like, all right, cool. Well, I have this carousel heat press. I have the speed, whatever. Like, I can do this twelve, fourteen color print in the same amount of time, if not less, when you count in burning 14 screens, coating 14 screens, clean the inks, tear down, everything. Do all that math, it's like, cool, well, anything under a six color, I'm going to screen print. Because there's always going to be that 10,000 piece order that's a one color front, one color back that you could throw on it. If it's fast it. enough, if, if, D, if it's DTF Right, but I'm saying enough, you'd, have the, you'd have the one or two six color autos that can screen print, and then you have a or fleet contract of heat that press, out. and then To all the shops that are struggling because they're, they don't DTF, you know, you contract that out. I don't we're, know. We're I, talking hard about DTF because Adrian's here. I'm not saying I'm like serious. No, like I'm, DTF I'm totally all day long, I almost sold my 10 color. I was going to sell my 10 color sportsman and one of our sprints and just to make room for this massive DTF, um, you know, sort of like you're talking about um, transition because I think it's coming. I think if we are, if we don't adapt, we're not really being responsible owners, you know? And so this is really, this is real. It's real talk here. And yeah. So, and <laughs> I think that is, I mean, if you don't adapt, then you will die. You will you will go out of business there or there won't be space for you eventually because it's so important to kind of go along with the changes. And that doesn't mean that screen printing, as I said, has to go away. But if you're not it's understanding that either. DTF so is here and you're like, no, 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 no. And I mean, DTG, maybe, you know, maybe people are like, oh, I don't I really wish I wouldn't have bought that machine. I don't see that in the DTF space. But I think there are a lot of people with old school mentalities that are just so anti when you should just look at it as an addition and potentially the future of the apparel industry. I think that was the thing too. keep your hand down for a second. <laughs> in, in, in a minute. Yeah, in a minute. We have a Q&A, so yeah. I like again being real like that when I bought my G3 the the goal was for the next year to get a digital squeegee and then DTF came in hard that same year and I didn't buy it I was like I'm not gonna buy this you know whatever it was at the time half a quarter million dollar half a million dollar machine and then now I'm really glad I didn't buy it because we know somebody that's trying to sell one and can't right I mean nothing against it but it's just kind of like now I can buy a really fast heat press for 
few thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's, where, that's where we go. Yeah. Should we let Ross ask? Yeah, <laughs> Ross, ask your question. Well, I just want to know what your thoughts are on TTF changing the DTC to the Tennessee Tech Bowl. Because that was the big thing that was I mean, I would say the latter, but I'd like to hear from you guys. You're talking more just like doing like people buying a digital machine and doing pre-treat and all that stuff? Yeah. So, yeah, direct to consumer printing. So yeah. All of the one-off printing. The, right. Know, the red bubble and the Amazon, et cetera. Yeah. But currently, it's, you know, done either through Corny or Polaris or Rob. Right. I think anything that requires pre-treat, in my opinion, is not worth it. Yeah, unless it's auto pre-treat, then I guess like with... But even then, you end up with issues. You have pre-treat stains. You have... You can only do certain garments with DTF. You can put it on just about anything. I think for one-offs, one-offs DTG is probably still relevant. Um, But if it's... If you're fulfilling for a band on tour or something, or I don't know, you know what I mean? Like something like that, then you could could store 100 DTF sheets... And somebody places that or you pull it, fulfill it. Um, That's what we were doing. We had mm-hmm. fulfillment at post COVID there. And we had a, a comedian that always just used his logo on all these different blanks. And instead of having all these shelves full of hoodies and everything else, we just had a stack of transfers. And then when somebody ordered, we had a blank black tee or sweatpants or whatever and transferred it and shipped it out. And we saved tons of space. And I think with Courtney, you're really looking at, high-end apparel the fashion industry maybe not so much what screen printers are doing currently i think you're looking at interior design there's a lot more that i think is on that end of the court neat spectrum um just especially even just from my word format background is what i was seeing on that end yeah okay do you have anything more that you would like to add to dtf space or anything that dtf.printing.com is coming out with or yeah, so I can't say now. And Zach has a question, but <laughs> okay, I'll see question. So I, I can't give details now, but maybe by the time this airs, um, everyone should head to DTFExpo.com because the 2025 event will be announced. Um, I guess I can say that it will be double the size, double the attendees, bigger, better, all of the things. In so- Phoenix again, or where is it going to be? You'll have to find out. Yeah. It doesn't come out until. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was told zip my lips. So that is what I'm doing. Um, but that information will come out soon and um, registration will, will open soon after that for vendors and attendees. And I really urge everyone, if you're in the space, curious to go. Um, this uh, past expo was, you know, sold out from attendance perspective, vendor perspective, um, a, the education centers or sessions, which I was leading, um, sometimes standing room only for the sessions. And it was a room of 150 people. People were seated. They were like, I'm here these next two days. I want to learn every right. single thing that I so can. New. Yeah. So like for me, that's awesome because you can go to trade shows and you sometimes come to these rooms and it's like two people, right. five people. Um, and it's, it's not really amped up, but that was, that was cool to see. So stay tuned for DTF Expo, um, the DTF printing podcast. You can always listen to on any of the platforms or head to our website, dtfprinting.com. We have 18 episodes out, um, so far they come out every other Tuesday. Uh, we're also, um, pushing out the learning sessions from DTF Expo. Um, those are coming out every other Tuesday as well. So if you didn't come to the Expo, you can watch those for free. Um, and we're working on a cool new video series with shop tours, like we were at um, Warrior, Warrior Logo Wear, where it's just a couple minutes giving a tour of their shop, and those will be dropping soon. So a lot is of fun Is there stuff. anything in DTF space that you know is coming that... The general public might not know. Oh, you think I can say that? Uh, well, I just mean, like I said, like we were talking about faster carousels yeah. or better printers or whatever. I, like technology-wise, is there something that... I'm not saying give us a secret. I'm yeah. Saying, like, well, I did a, hear something, like, but I wasn't next? really excited about it. So maybe I'm not going to say what that is because it didn't really seem... It's a wider printer and I... 
I don't care about that. Yeah. So I wasn't like too thrilled about that, but I do think that the printers that are out on the market now will be getting better in the next couple of years. Um, Bigger and, players coming in mm-hmm. with full yes. machines. And not just, I mean, a lot of machines are all the same, right. <laughs> but I think there'll be some new players coming soon. And also it's not, uh, really the it's it, it has dtf in the name but it, it's really not the same uv dtf for anything flat so promo products um i think that you're going to be seeing a lot more in that space and a lot more apparel decorators bringing you the dtf in-house is there anything coming out that might be different is getting away from the powder well corny announced at Vespa that they are having a powderless machine but that was just an announcement um a couple months ago and i haven't heard anything because i think that would be the biggest like step forward as far as production like bringing it in-house i feel like a lot of people have concerns with the the powder yeah so um there's an article on our site I, i wrote it a few months ago about how safe is dtf more questions than answers right now but the biggest thing is whether you're in your basement or in your living room or you have a shop like logo daddy it's environment and there are safety precautions that you have to take you shouldn't be in a small space without a mask and just letting that powder you know come out into the air for the transfer one for me (laughs) 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 whatever floats your boat dylan um but yeah so i mean you have to be safe and smart about it and there are going to be you know like a lot of companies are taking into consideration those rules and regulations and making sure that everything is echo tech certified and and checking all the boxes yeah. um but yeah like but that's the thing you have to be you have to be smart and safe about your environment no matter what i don't want to get too much into that but my other concern is just is there a like recyclable transfer sheet or is I don't that know. all that's a good question. Because now if we're bringing more and so more and really, more into this, into the space. Yeah, because like, you there's more and more plastic the, just rolls. The transfers are all on the ground. They're filling the trash right. can. Yeah, I mean, if... Biodegradable or Great question. Recyclable. Great idea. That definitely needs to be added to the list if it's not already. That'll be my homework. Okay. So anybody, you had a question? Anybody, Zach. Zach, question? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Zach's question was, what do we do in the front office as far as selling and educating and pricing matrix and all that for DTF? So for us personally, it's it's hard because we're trying to go to these clients that would normally come to us and screen print might be this price, but then with DTF where we're getting it and with our markup and whatever it is, it might actually be cheaper to go with DTF. But then again, it's a quality standpoint too of like, is it quite there? Is it going to last as long? Does it have as many washes? Whatever. So a lot of times for us, it's just educating the customer on like, this is another tool that could get you to achieve this like insane color print. Like say it's, you know, 30 color print or something. It's like, okay, cool. We could do sim process, make it like a 14 color print and we could do this and that and have these limitations or we could do this other product. Like we get a lot of people who just now everybody's in the AI art. And they're just making all this crazy. Everything's a, everything's a half tone. Everything's a whatever. And it's like, cool. Yeah, we could screen print this, but we could do this this other way. And then it's kind of like, do we give them a cheaper price? Where if we were to screen print it, we could do this. To us, it's more, what can we produce and get it out of the shop faster, so that it's not a headache or a, a bottleneck for us. But as far as like educating the customer, we're trying to get like printed samples done again. Like we will screen print something that's complicated. We will take that same art and order a DTF version and we'll press it ourselves just to have it in our showroom so we can like physically see the difference. So then we do have a client comes in, we can show them like, here's one, like the John thing here, like this is the difference between the two. And again, if they walk in and they just want their logo on something, they don't necessarily care if it's screen print or not. They might pick one that's cheaper and faster. And for us, it's less headaches. So it's costless. Did I give a good enough answer? Great. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> really proud of you. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, any more questions? Okay. 
We got this guy over here. Yeah. Come on up here, big guy. <laughs> Ian. We have a special segment today. You ready to go? Um, cool. So Andy mentioned a little bit earlier, if they were starting over from scratch, what decoration methods would they use? And they've been kind enough to let me sponsor a little segment here. And we're going to transport to that same world where they're starting over for the first time again. But now they're also picking the blanks that they're going to use as their shop. So what we're going to do is a mock t-shirt draft. So you guys might be familiar with like the NFL draft or the NBA draft or the uh, NHL draft. Pick any sport. Um, but today we're going to draft blank t-shirt styles. And the reason that's relevant for me and why they brought me on for this is I am one of the founders at DGI Apparel, which is a website that you can use to order across all of your blank apparel vendors on one website. You can see your custom pricing tier, manage all your carts there, and you know hopefully cut your ordering time in half. Um, so we're just going to set it up pretty simply. We're just going to do three rounds. We'll go like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, and the idea is that these are the only three styles of shirts or garments, any garment, that you're going to use until the end of time. So we want to hear a little justification into why you've picked this as one of the three that you can use forever. Um, do you guys have any questions before we start? We're going to wing it. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this goes. They had maybe 48 hours of notice, and then Adrian had about 30 minutes of notice. That and we I were... don't push it t-shirts, so <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? All right. Uh, awesome. Dylan, go for it. You have round one, pick one. I just get to pick one item? Yep. <laughs> All right. So the one item that I personally love is the Threadfast 321H, which is a hoodie that fits. I, all of these are because they fit me and my weird body. Um, so I really like that hoodie. It's lightweight. It fits me good. It doesn't have like loose arms or sleeves and it has a cell phone pocket in the main hoodie pocket. So like for me, like I walk a lot and I wear, I have, I have Hank Hill ass, so I have nothing to stop my pants from falling down. So the less weight, the less weight I have in my pants, the better. So I put, like putting my cell phone in my hoodie so it's not bouncing around. Okay. Awesome. Good I pick. justified yeah, the hell out of that pick. hoodie. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great pick, Dylan. Great pick. My justification for my first pick is because I'm wearing it, and that's what all my TGF printing t-shirts are. Uh, all made tri-blend, so AL 2004. Um, I love cashmere, so I'm going to go with the... Um, no, I really do, but it's, it's, not, it's not practical. <laughs> uh, can we print on cashmere? We could DTF cashmere, see? Perfect. Um, I like the 3413 for the T. Um, it's tri-blend. I don't know what it's made of, but it's made out of three things, I think, to try. Um, but it just feels good on my body. So that's it. Cashmere, open-ended cotton. <laughs> and, <laughs> and cardboard scraps. All right. And then we'll send it back down this way. So, uh, Andy, you get two picks in a row. You do oh. round two, pick one now. Joe, what's the um, Bella hoodie? 3719. 3719. BC hoodie. Um, I don't know. It feels like cashmere on the inside, sort of, you know, and I love cashmere. So that's why I'm going with it. I couldn't tell you what cashmere is. <laughs> but can you DTF it? Um, I also like wearing the independent heavyweight hoodie. So <laughs> is it IND 4000? <clears throat> I don't know. I have a couple. It's a great all around hoodie. It's solid. Uh, my number one pick across the board would be the 1717. I, the comfort colors. So I, I know you, that was on your, like one of the most used lists or whatever, but like for me, I changed my whole wardrobe once I discovered the 1717 to comfort colors. And I am that snob when shops offer to send me a shirt or I buy like a bootleg shirt online. If it's not printed on this shirt, I won't buy it. Interesting. That is, uh, Dylan did just mention, so we do have like a list of top 10 items on DGI Apparel. Um, they're usually just the first 10 you see when you get to the website. And so far, that is the first one to get picked. So you're getting some hidden gems here. Uh, all right, Dylan, you want to send it back down for the last round? Shit. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say, in all honesty, for the printers, I know everybody likes all the soft shirts and whatever to wear, but if I was to go out Don't and ask any printer what it. their favorite shirt Don't to print it. on Don't is the Gildan 5000. Fuck. 
We all know it's true. That's not fair that he got two in a row. He shouldn't have done that. That's not how the draft works, is it? Do they? <laughs> yeah, typically uh, serpentine. <laughs> G five thousand all day long. Classic. If I if I am I my my I don't care who the end user is, whatever. If I am just picking shirts to print all day long, it would be the G five thousand. That is uh, top easiest three to most load, popular. Easiest yeah. to print. Uh, Color options. Color options. Are um, yeah, like availability, deep stock, and all that stuff. I mean, customers ask for it. They love it. It's a crowd pleaser. Can't go wrong. G5000. I'll trade. Can I trade? Is we can that, share. We, We're friends. That, you, can, you guys could trade, and then Dylan, you would get the final pick of the draft that way. If Andy You're going to give me... The I just pick all the best the, options. Give me the, <laughs> <laughs> give me the, the G5000, right, and, and you can have... You can it, have so. uh, um, some cashmere. Like, I've got some at home for you. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Adrian? Adrian gets the... I'm so lost. I <laughs> don't know what's going on. Sports. <laughs> say G5000. <laughs> what did you say? Say G5000. G5000. <laughs> well, I had, I had the G5000. I had the Gildan. Okay, uh, I also have uh, these shirts. So the Bella Unisex jersey t-shirt BC3001. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a good shirt. Yeah, and fun fact that is that is the most popular shirt bought on our website across over a thousand shops now. Uh, so CVC or, or the three thousand one? Straight three thousand one. CVC is like seventh, I think. Yeah. So. Really, CVC is our two. CVC first pick for us. CVC. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, we had a question. What was number two? I believe number two is the NL sixty two ten. So that's actually this shirt that I'm wearing right now. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the amount of time I've been spending in Florida and she just bought me a shitload of them, but it's the, the long sleeve tee with the hood, the district that for me, a uh, pasty white guy from New York, the sun has been destroying me and having that to go on morning walks in Florida has been awesome. Right, well, Saves my neck, my ears, my Christina, arms. would you introduce them to sunscreen? There's a thing that you... <laughs> You ever see that picture of uh, Mark Zuckerberg with sunscreen on his face? No. All right, so that's that's uh, Dylan's fourth pick. Like that the draft. Yeah. There are other ways. Uh, all right, Andy, you want to bring us home? Oh, how do I do that? Last, the last pick in the draft. Oh, I thought I traded for the. You the traded? Fight. Oh, and then you swapped. Now you get to talk okay. about why you love it so yeah, much. Let's hear it. What do I love? The, the G five hundred. Yeah. Oh, I thought I said so like kind of the same reasons Dylan mentioned uh, it's the number one seller at our shop um, people request it they like the fit you know it used to be it was trending it's towards, back now for sure yeah it was trending more athletic for, for I don't know how many years and now um, it started with it I feel like it started with the high school um, girls really they would come in and they'd want the bigger baggier stuff and so um, Bella for us just stopped selling for that demo really and it went straight 5,000 and if that's out we can what's great about the 5,000 everybody knows if they if you're if you're if you can't find like smalls and whatever color then you just go to the 2,000 it's the same it matches or you go to the 8,000 maybe even the 8,000 yeah same matches or the 64 whatever million that was like million. the I know there's like people fashion and all this other stuff but it's kind of like when I first started it was all band shirts it was I was in the band world every band was like give me the this shirt it was a g5000 all day long the biggest possible print it had the best like print between seams like i said it was easy to load it was it was our go-to for a really long time and then you obviously get into more like fashion brands and all this other stuff that we were doing and then it was all like slim fits and like painted shirts on and not for me so that's my pick Awesome. Well, did I win? I Does I? I don't know anything about sports. Did I just win this thing? I, yeah, I you would won. say Dylan won. won. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think uh, the only controversial thing I noticed for like the rosters they put together is I don't think Andy has any hoodies or anything for the winner, right? Yeah, he said three seven one nine. Oh, three seven one nine. There we go. All right. So overall, Adrian didn't awesome. have a hoodie. No, you did. You had the forty five hundred. Independent. Yeah, the heavyweight. Mm. So honestly, great picks. Well, thank you guys so much for letting me do this like fun little segment. Yeah, thanks, dude. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And. Uh, if you guys don't have an account on DJI Apparel, uh, feel free to make one. It's free to sign up, free to use, and hopefully saves you a lot of time in your yep. ordering. So it's thanks. awesome. Yeah. Adrian, thank you for doing this with us. You were our first thought when we knew we were coming here. So 
Everyone give it up for Adrian. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank so, you guys for being here. Yeah. So we all know who John is. We've had John on. We've talked about John on episodes. What happened? Why did you, why are we in a new building? So we, um, our business, you know, we were growing. So we needed bigger space and we were fortunate to be able to find um, the bigger space here. We really felt really lucky to find this building because we, like I was looking everywhere and the price of buildings and the price of everything and the interest rates and everything else going on right now. I'm like, man, how do we, how would we get a bigger building? But we, we found this, we were very fortunate. It was, it needed a lot of work and there was a company, it wasn't even for sale. There was a company in it. This that, building wasn't this for building sale? This building was not for sale. We, I drove around this town and went door to door, literally rode on my bike, went door to door, knocking on doors and said, Hey, um, do you want to sell your building? Well, nobody's going to want to sell you their building when you're riding around. They thought I was crazy. Bike. They thought I was crazy. They were walking in. They look at me. I go, I go, hey, really strange question. I know random. You'll pull your cardboard jacket off. <laughs> they're probably like, they're probably like the drug dealers around here are bad or the druggies yeah. are bad around here. <laughs> and um, and He's so. Like, want to sell your building? But it was, yeah, right. Scratching my face. Yeah. And so um, it was crazy because I, you know. I think, you know, people did, after I, I introduced myself, I said, hey, this is what we're doing. I'm looking for more space, whatever. I like this area. Thank you. It was much more central in St. Louis for us. It, I thought it offered a better customer base. And so, um, and we just wanted to be closer to Andy so we could right. try to steal more of his Makes business. Sense. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> we never steal any of his business. They're, they're pretty good over there. So we. Um, There's we, so much printing to go around. There you is. Know? There's like, a lot. So it's great. Like. Well, we'll get back to it. But people ask me why we invite people into our shop to see it. I don't know. There's a lot of printing to go around, so we don't worry about that. But we, I came to the building that we're in right now, and I thought to myself, it was beautiful. Um, had a brick front. It was like two stories. It's really nice, big. And I go, probably bigger than I needed. And I said, I didn't even go in because I go, I can't afford that place. It's not. It's never going to work out. But in the meantime, I talked to a couple of realtors and I had said what I was looking for. And a guy called me like literally almost the next day and said, hey, I have a building in Valley Park. If you were interested in it, the people are looking for more space, but we don't know, you know, they're really not in a hurry to move, but their number would be around the number you have to spend. And so if you look at the building and you like it, maybe we can start working from there. So we, we came and I, it was this building. I looked at it and I, it was fantastic. The way it was set up with shipping and receiving kind of splits it in the middle and we do vinyl and um, screen print. So it just worked out really good. And to you have that massive bay down there. Yeah, it's huge. Our rat bay is incredible compared to what we had. Um, we can fit an entire tractor trailer. Well, we will be able to fit. We're putting a door in there so we can back an entire tractor trailer hooked up into the bay and lock it down and not have to pull it out. So that was important to us. Just having more space. We wanted to add another auto and we wanted to just grow a little bit in our production facility. So, and we really needed more finishing because we had, you know, that was the problem we ran into at the other shop, yeah. similar to you, like, a, you know, a lot of trailers and, and everything yeah. else. Yeah. You're like, where do you go with all these shirts? If you get an order for 10,000 pieces, where do you put it? You know? So, so what, what is it like when, you know, you have, because I was at your last shop yeah. And your last shop was set up like it was it That's was nice. flowing. It was great. I mean, I, I was impressed when I yeah. when I was there. And so what makes you um, so crazy as to take on, <laughs> you know, this project of, hey, I'm going to go do that again. I'm going to because when when I first saw this building, it <laughs> didn't look anything like this. Sure. it didn't. And so, I mean, how do you have all that energy? And um, and also it's all that first form. <laughs> 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 it's like a, it's like Ricky Bobby, uh, first form and first form interview. Uh. John's first, John's first form code is what is it? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Just type in uh, logo daddy first form. <laughs> but for real, like how, what makes you um, do something like this and take on this project and how do you have all that energy and, and, and that risk that comes with all that too? Yeah, it's a good question. I think that, um, I don't know. It's, I think part of me, I think part of every entrepreneur is just a little bit crazy or maybe it's something um, I did hear. I did hear. So, and I'm going to, I don't listen to Andy for on a lot of things, but he did say something once and it really stuck with me. He said, you know, you can go a really long way just by trying to prove a motherfucker wrong. 
<laughs> and I think a lot in my life, not that I tried to prove somebody wrong, but I think I think a lot of entrepreneurs are always like, I don't know if it's you're trying to prove to yourself that you can do it yeah. or your team that you can do it or whatever the situation is. But I think that you're like, I'm going to like, let's, we can get bigger. We can do these things. Right. And for me, I have a, I have a great team that has been with me for a long time. Um, I don't know. I feel like I've always made them promises, right? Like we're trying to get to a certain level. We want to do this. We want to grow. We want to expand so we can make, you know, be more profitable and, and pay better, do better things. So, and we found that customer, right? That we thought we could grow with and we were growing with several customers. So we were like, we need this space. So I don't know. I, a long time ago when my kiddo was sick, I told myself if he's ever not sick, I don't have to worry about that. Like that's scary. When you have a sick kid, that's scary. Business isn't scary. Taking a risk for me in business isn't scary. Like I'm like, you know, just work hard and we'll get through it or whatever. And so I always believe that. And I've, so I was just like, hey, let's do it. And, and honestly, when you really, when I weighed it out, I looked at, hey, here's what we're paying now. Here's how much this building costs. Here's the difference in what we're going to pay. It's a new building. I knew, I think that I have an advantage uh, over some people because I'm not, like, I'm not scared to do the work, you know? Yeah. People walk around this building, it looks beautiful now. Um, I pressure washed every bit of it with a on a and like was soaking wet and covered in dirt and worked well we saw hours a day we saw a lot of progress picks along the way of like fixing things up and even this room it's crazy just like this room um i literally sprayed these ceilings black and um our team painted everything in this room when we were slow in the winter if we had a slow week we literally brought our entire production team up here and we picked like two person teams like hey you two paint this color and you two paint this color and you two paint this color and we just painted this entire thing out so it's kind of cool because we build it as a team and i think if you i think when i think when people invest in building something with you they believe in it more or they they care about it more they're more invested yeah i've been really proud of my team the last couple of days because they've showed me a lot um they put in a lot of hours did a lot of things that they well how good are you gonna sleep tonight oh man (laughs) <laughs> what time is it? I got like an hour and a half left that I feel like I'm on the clock. Um, hey, what we didn't mention is that we're here and we're here for this house party. Yeah. It's an open house. Yeah. Which uh, you invited not just people from the industry, but people from the neighborhood and from. Yeah, everybody. All we we so. wanted to have a cool community event. Um, and then we also, you know, we coupled it with uh, we had a Made Lab event yesterday. Uh, great class. It was it was I felt it was exceptional. I thought it was it went really, really well. Um that stuff is fun for me. I love the education part of it. I love that we are able to do that with this building. Like this, this room that we're sitting in for me is I'm really proud of it because it's like my production team does what they do every day and they're growing that part of the business. But this is the part of the business that I want to grow. Um, we've the only reason that I could do this move when we, when you ask about that, a lot of, a lot of the reasons I feel like I have an advantage there too. I've built so many good relationships. Like when we switched to rock and we did these things, um, so many people helped me out to get that, to, to get all the equipment that we have here and just like, you know, whether it was, um, whether it was a good deal or just getting it for me in time when I needed it or just doing different things for me. Um, they helped us to be where we're at and make sure our production didn't slow down, make sure we didn't lose any money. And so, um, I don't know, it was a combination of everything. So this weekend was special to me because the class went really well. We had this big house party or open house. Um, we got to do a ribbon cutting. That was the first time we've been in business 17 years. We've never got to do that. I was proud of that. Um, that was really, really, really cool. And then, um, I don't know, the day's just been kind of, uh, it's been, I don't know, memorable you're, you're and You're in it and you were ready to get out of it. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm in it and ready to get out of it. But I tried to, I told myself two days ago and I got this from um, our friend Andy here because we just did this little trip together and he was talking about, we were on the plane and we were talking about. They're gone for forever. There goes my phone. (laughs) We were talking about just being in the moment with things Mm -hmm. and thinking about that. And, um, you know, so I really thought about that during this last couple of days and like to think about, I, so one of my good friends is one of our food vendors here. And he, he just said to me, he goes, I remember carrying in a wooden pallet for you to set your first press on in your garage and watching you print t-shirts in your garage, you know? And so, and now he, he just pulled, I haven't seen him in a long, long time. And he pulled up here as a vendor and he's like, this is incredible, you know? So yeah. when I think about that transition, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Well, you're not just doing screen printing either. You're trying to do education here. Yeah. Yeah. I think, 
I don't know. I, I like that part. I think that this industry changed my life um, for the better. And I see and I meet so many friends that like have this great story that you guys tell every week on Shark Show. And when you hear these stories and these guys are like, yeah, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I started this print shop. And the next thing you know, here I am. Right. And these guys um, and then and they're doing really well and they live. You know, we went we, we went on this trip with some of our friends and these guys live incredible lives because of this industry. So I'm like why don't we teach more people about it or show people what it is? Yeah. So I love that. Like if I can bring somebody in here and I can show them the shop or I can turn them on to screen printing or even, or vinyl wraps or whatever it is that we do. So many young people are artistic and they just kind of don't know what to do with it. And so if you can show them, Hey, there is a career path here and this is actually a real thing that you can be, it's tangible. You can make money and you can do something cool with it. I don't know. That's sort of I feel like the more and more people that do these education things, the more and more our industry will be looked at as a trade and not a hobby. hundred percent. Like I don't understand why it's not, you know, I hear kids go my own son, like, Oh, I think I'm going to get into welding or I'm going to get into this or that. You know, they, why not they, printmaking? they teach that at school, but yeah. they don't teach, you know, screen printing all the time or things like that. So I think the education part is really cool. And even for guys that have already made that switch and they're like, Hey, I'm trying to do this like just young guys in the industry to help them out. There was a few young guys in my class that um, I met along the way by selling them a piece of equipment or giving them some advice. And they came to the class and they were really, really impressed and loved it. And it's cool that they were like, dude, your shop is so nice. And we're just starting out. Do you think we can get there? And I'm like, hell yeah, you can get there. You know, just keep it up and keep doing what you do. So I think also just makes you personally feel really good. Like I know me and my shop and like, building it up and getting it where it is and then you you get to bring someone in and show them like yeah. hey this is my place and it's like i mean we've all had this where someone's like oh you print t-shirts and then they actually come <laughs> to the shop and they're like holy shit this right. is what it takes to print t-shirts right and they see it and it's like you gotta be so fucking proud of this place like, yeah it's awesome yeah it's cool it's um when when people that i look up to in the industry um tell me that you know like the shop is uh we got some really nice compliments when they tell me like hey the 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 shop's elite or it's very nice or you know it's beautiful yeah. or whatever like that's pretty cool you know like i think all of us you try to you try to do the right thing you try to buy the right equipment you try to do all this cool stuff and so it's just neat when it finally comes together yeah. and, and you get and maybe you get a little recognition for it or whatever yeah nice. hell yeah you know they say well, um it? if you really want to learn something then teach it too you know yeah. Yeah. and we find that all the time like when we do our classes that um, we've gotten so much better just because we don't we don't know everything. Even just the know, podcast. And, yeah. Like, we just want to sit down and have a conversation. We're not acting like we know anything. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's it. You know, sometimes, you know, we've we've all talked. And when when someone asks me, like, how, you know, what I'm thankful about this industry or whatever, I'm like, you know, it's kind of incredible that I'm like that I'm taking seriously in the industry, because for me, I don't know. You know, I look up to some of these other printers and these print shops that have done all these amazing things. And I guess you don't always put yourself in the same, you know, when you look in the mirror, you don't always see the same thing everybody else sees. Um, but it's pretty cool. You know, at some level when people come and they're you know, like, you're like a known brand. Yeah. At some level, when you get to that point, you're like, wow, we, right. we kind of, we're kind of doing this. Did something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Well, thanks, John. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, it's definitely elevated the level of what we did today i think and um what you guys do with the show is incredible and that's why like it was i had so many incredible sponsors and people that were here at this event that was like super powerful to me and like when you guys agreed to do it i really appreciate it because we're here for you you guys are awesome bro (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) so thank you guys we just wanted to party with you. We knew you were yeah. the party guys. Well, like we have a lot of tequila. <laughs> right. okay. And uh, and I think we have a bar booked, so we should go do that later. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, no, no. Come no. on. No. <laughs> you can't get can of corn questions. <laughs> yes, M&R is better. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the name Logo Daddy? Where did Logo Daddy come from was the question. Uh, You know... I guess, so I was thinking, it was a long time ago, and I was like, I wanted logo something. I thought that would be like, like if we're putting logos on things. I like, always thought it was just like a like a nighttime thing with you and Jules. 
Well, I, I would like to say that, but I mean, I don't know. We'll let her answer that question, but yeah, well, yeah, yeah, Jules found, Jules figured it out. No, I think that I was just wanting something with logo. So like, I was thinking like logo dog, logo this, logo that. And somebody said logo daddy. And I go, I don't know, it kind of like flows together. It kind of sounds good. And then I was like, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's a little, maybe, I don't the know. The thing about it is it's just, it sticks with you. It does. That's what, I've had so many people that are like, man, logo daddy is such a great name. Like it's, you remember it or whatever. And so. I don't know. It's just one of those things. It you definitely out. won't forget it. Yeah. 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 Logo Daddy. So Great. It works out. Well, thanks, John. This place is awesome. We're going to go actually enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. All right. Let's do it. Appreciate See you. you. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys.